This winter could be one of the coldest winters that we've seen in years. After years of milder winters driven by El Nino, the setup heading into the winter of 2025 looks much different, with a large pattern change that'll lead to a much more severe winter. And right now, El Nino is rapidly fading in the Pacific Ocean, and this is setting the stage for a dramatic atmospheric weather change across North America this winter. And when this dramatic shift happens, the jet stream begins to behave differently, and it often leads to highly unstable weather patterns. And we are talking about the potential for polar vortex disruptions, bitter Arctic outbreaks, and prolonged cold waves that could reach all the way down to the Gulf Coast. After years of mild winters, this winter could be very different as we could be dealing with relentless cold that we haven't really seen since the early 2010s. And while El Nino is rapidly fading, what replaces it will dramatically change what we see this winter. The El Nino Southern Oscillation, otherwise known as ENZO, is what builds the foundation for what we can expect during the winter seasons in the United States. The first phase of Enzo is El Nino, a period marked by warmer than normal Pacific waters. This warmth shifts the polar jet stream north, keeping much of the northern United States mild while trapping Arctic air over Canada. And the opposite Enzo phase is La Nina. La Nina is defined by colder than normal Pacific waters. During La Nina, the jet stream slips south, allowing frequent bursts of Arctic air to plunge into the United United States. In between La Nina and El Nino is our neutral phase, which could happen this winter. This is when Pacific waters are near average and Enzo's influence weakens. In these cases, other drivers like polar blocking and sudden stratospheric warming take the lead in shaping the winter pattern. And heading into this winter, NOAA has issued a La Nina advisory, meaning that we are officially entering a winter pattern that is dominated by La Nina conditions. This combination historically leads to volatile patterns. We can expect quick hitting heat waves and brutal cold snaps, and a higher risk of Arctic air reaching deep into the lower 48. The last time we saw a setup like this was back in the winter of 2013 and 14, which many of you probably remember. But in case you don't remember, this was one of the coldest winters in modern United States history. That year featured a neutral to La Nina based pattern, strong high latitude blocking, and repeated polar vortex disruptions. The result of this winter was relentless cold. For example, Chicago spent over 20 25 days below zero, and the extreme effects did not end there. Parts of the Deep South and Texas also experienced deep freezes, causing power outages and critical infrastructure losses. In fact, more recent winters have still resulted in significant power grid failures. For example, during the February 2021 Texas freeze, more than 4.5 million homes and businesses lost power amid deep cold and ice. On the other hand, across the Midwest, temperatures frequently dropped 20 degrees below zero with wind chills occasionally reaching as low as 60 degrees below zero. Now that is brutal cold. And this year, we are seeing many of the same signals. This includes neutral Pacific water temperatures, a negative North Atlantic oscillation, and a developing ridge trough pattern that favors cold east of the Rockies. Now with all that said, this does not guarantee that we are going to see a repeat of the winter of 2013 and 14. However, this does suggest that sustained cold is likely, especially in January and February. Based on current trends, this is how the winter of 2025 into 2026 is currently shaping up. The Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and Northeast will face repeated Arctic fronts and long-lasting cold spells that will make it feel like a winter from the past, with wind chills dipping to dangerous levels for extended periods, and persistent cold leading to frozen ground and rivers across many areas. The Central Plains, Tennessee Valley, and northern portions of the South will experience frequent cold snaps mixed with short warm periods creating strong temperature swings that could lead to freezing rain and ice issues during transitions. And lastly, the desert southwest and the west coast will remain largely protected from these Arctic outbreaks. This is because high pressure ridging will keep conditions dry and mild, with California and Arizona experiencing periods of warmth that contrast sharply with frigid conditions across the rest of the country. The coldest periods this winter will likely range from late December through early March, with the the absolute coldest weather happening from mid-January into mid-February. We could see multi-week stretches that feature far below average temperatures and sustained cold waves that rival the early 2010s. The frequency and intensity of these Arctic intrusions could make this one of the more consistently cold winters in recent memory. And like with any winter, even if there are brief warm-ups, there will be plenty of cold fronts that will repel any sort of long-term heat waves. With this colder pattern setting in, we're looking at a much greater potential 
potential for intense snowfall across the central United States, the Midwest, and especially the Great Lakes region. Major cities like Chicago, Milwaukee, Grand Rapids, Detroit, and Cleveland could be in for relentless stretches of snowfall events. From fast-moving Alberta clippers to powerful lake effect snow bands stacking up week after week, even farther south and west, places like Kansas City, Omaha, Des Moines, and St. Louis may wind up seeing more snow than they've had in years. Lake effect snow could be explosive early on, as repeated waves of Arctic air sweep across the still unfrozen Great Lakes. It's not unnecessarily about one massive blizzard this year, it's about the sheer number of smaller storms that could steadily pile up into some truly impressive totals by the end of the season. Prolonged cold does not just affect snowfall in winter conditions, it affects the daily part of our lives. The type of cold that we are looking at this winter could create ripple effects in multiple sectors. And with any winter, one of the biggest problems is that heating will surge. This will put heavy strain on natural gas and electrical grids. Power companies may have to implement rolling blackouts in regions where demand exceeds supply. Home heating costs could spike significantly, especially during peak cold in late January and early to mid-February. And as we alluded to earlier in the forecast, Texas has dealt with this in the past where rolling blackouts happen when it gets abnormally cold and big ice storms happen. So this is a friendly reminder, if you have a generator, make sure that is ready to go this winter. Additionally, flashlights and other devices should always be ready to go before any big winter storm. Another problem is that deep frost lines can damage water mains and road surfaces. The constant freezing and thawing will lead to potholes, pipe breaks, and increased maintenance demands. Power outages will become more dangerous if they occur during prolonged cold spells, with temperatures falling faster indoors than many homes are prepared for. Hard freezes could harm citrus crops, livestock operations, and early planting cycles in the south. Extended cold can cause feed shortages and water supply issues for farmers. And lastly, wind chills that are 30 degrees below zero can cause frostbites in minutes. The risk of hypothermia increases significantly for those without reliable heat, and carbon monoxide poisoning incidents often rise during cold winters as people turn to unsafe heating sources. Elderly populations and those that live in rural areas will face these greatest challenges. And even without record snow, the cold could make this one of the more disruptive winters in recent memory. The extended nature of this cold may test the durability of power grids, infrastructure, and emergency preparedness systems across much of the country. Another way that you can prepare for this brutal winter is by having a reliable weather app, and that's why today's sponsor, Radar Omega, is here to help. If you've ever watched my live coverages of tornadoes, hurricanes, or winter storms, you've seen Radar Omega in action. It's my go-to weather app because it has everything all in one place, including real-time radar, forecast models, satellite data, live storm chasers, and hundreds of live cameras across the country. Radar Omega is also rolling out a ton of exciting updates over the next few months, which is going to make this weather app even more powerful for extreme weather events. So if you want to follow the weather the same way I do, you can download Radar Omega on iOS and Android with the top links in the description below and become a pro like me today. So the biggest thing this winter is make sure that you are prepared for big winter storms and cold weather. And if you can take one thing away from this winter forecast, make sure that you are prepared for this winter as it could be a very cold one and it could feature some big winter storms. And it's always a good idea to be prepared ahead of time before a winter storm or an Arctic blast strikes your location. And as always, thank you all so much for watching this winter forecast. This is our third winter forecast of this year. We'll likely have one more in early December. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates and make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Max Velocity WX so you never miss a big update about anything in the weather world. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you all again in the next video.